Greetings, fellow creatives. Today, we will be testing out a different style of storytelling by sharing an older short story previously developed by our team as a world-building exercise. Since the initial dates of creation, we have embellished the story to provide an origin and more personal account to the mystical point of interest previously referred to as Fire Palace. For the purpose of provident research, we ask that you write a stern letter of approval to the comment section. Alternatively, if you find yourself feeling emotions of a more negative nature, you are kindly invited to take out such displeasures by brandishing your weapon of choice and swiftly decapitating the like button without remorse. There was once a great family who made their home in the lush hills of Elismar. Here, through luck, favor from the gods, and the combination of hard work from many servants, fire mages, and divine builders, the Radstone family began to forge their empire. As devout worshippers of the great fire god, they named their home Fire Palace. Many historical accounts from merchants, traveling artists, and mercenaries have stated that the sounds of clanking metal and ancient chants had echoed through the hills to neighboring countries until one day, every industrious sound ceased. Lady Gabriella, Duchess of the third generation to the newly founded dynasty in Alesma, had ambitions for a new era. She did not yearn for the simple life of a sovereign wife, as her parents had planned, but rather dreamed of a united Alesma under one true god. In her slumber, she would envisage a great land of eternal flame, where lakes and rivers of fire would satiate thirst. Trees would grow ember and ash berries, freeing the lands from hunger. All this would ignite a deep love for her and their god. With a room at library a month's ride and weeks ferry to her east, the lady-in-waiting undertook this journey in the name of knowledge. It is rumored that the Lady Gabriella had gotten lost during the great storm of Silver's Bay and found herself traveling south beyond the edge of the known world. Due to the lack of documentation surrounding the lands beyond the borders of the map, it can only be speculated that she found the end. Some have written that it was here that she met the ferryman to the underworld who would have taken her to the undead library of eternal knowledge at the cost of her soul. Although we can only speculate, we have found several accounts written by housemaids and the lady herself in the years following her return. Through my travels, I have obtained knowledge of the ancient practices of necromancy and realm bonding. The ancient forces guiding my search pushed me to discover an old tome nestled amongst dusty parchments of the forgotten world where gods walked with men. Although I had initially evaded the location, a cold beckoning pull reached into the most primal parts of my mind. It was as though my god himself called me to obtain the book. I do not wish to speak more on a matter I have not yet comprehended, but I have noticed that the book never seems to warm to the touch of my hand, irrespective of time. Perhaps it was just a matter of the colder elements in this part of the world. Regardless, with the knowledge gathered on this excursion, together with the tomes of divine magic at Fire Palace, I believe that I may have the power to create a portal. 
It is my greatest hope that the land of eternal fire may become our own through the merging of our fire god's realm and our own. Although it has never been tested, portals indeed exist, and I believe I know how to make one. Until then, I shall commit to further study and figure out how to open this god's damned book. Lady Gabriella Radstone. In the months leading up to the great silencing of Elismar, the lady was written to spend hours locked behind the closed doors of the central tower so that her experiments, if successful, would radiate the presence of their god equally through the palace. No further accounts barring a single note left by the lady herself leading up to the discovery post-silencing have been documented. The abandoned site was discovered several months later, once the silence of the lush hills of Elysma had become deafening. Any curious travelers were greeted by a radius of just over one day's travel of scorched earth, should they near the area. The radius of the ashen lands was defined as mathematically absolute. It was written that trees and bushes were green and lush with life on the outer side of the rim, whereas the inner portion was, in some cases, severely burned, and in other cases, entirely truncated. The most unnatural phenomenon was part of the desiccated trees bisected by this division. Here, it was observed that the anatomical structure of the living portion appeared to function independently of its missing parts. It was as if the still moving water traveling up the trunk had not noticed that the barriers on its inner parameter no longer existed. The brave or perhaps foolhardy troop of men were horrified to discover upon entering the cursed land and the palace within, Lady Gabriella's divinely aged corpse bent down and stretched across a message, presumably written in her own blood. Her body is noted as being almost carefully preserved despite the circumstances and was frozen. Her unseeing, fleshy remains lay posed with her mouth aghast, bloody left hand petrified and pointing at the book in the center of the room. The message read simply, Do not open. One of the men could not resist the icy pull emanating from the tome and sought to open the cover to its first page. The single eyewitness account of his final words were that of the first line in the book. Before you beckons the ancient tome of forgotten worlds, the man spoke aloud, before he had begun to separate and dissolve into two ephemeral entities. He recognized his unavoidable fate too late, with a shriek and a withering spirit-like echo filling the room, the entities split, his soul absorbing into the ink on the pages and the body between the lines themselves. Before bolting from the room, the eyewitness briefly crouched near the corpse to complete her warning and added, The cost is your soul, with a shard of charcoal from his pack. Thank you for listening. To all of you brave travelers and dragon slayers out there, may you have long days and pleasant nights. This is the Fantasy Tattooer, and the series is Born of Fire.